hello and welcome back to Girl Ascending. Uh, so today's video was actually suggested by a subscriber and I thought it was such a great idea that I just wanted to sit down and film it for everyone. So this is my top three tips for beginner tarot readers, um, or as I like to call them, call us uh, tarot tellers, because we're not fortune tellers, we're telling what the tarot is giving to us. Um, so if you want to stay tuned for these top three tips to help improve your tarot reading as a beginner, uh, let's get started. Okay, so tip number one, and that is to start off your tarot reading journey with the Rider Waite Smith deck. As you can see, mine has been used a lot. I've had to sellotape bits of it back together, um, but this is a really important deck. It's really the seminal deck that you want to get started with. Um, now, the Rider Waite Smith deck was first created in 1909. It's illustrated by a woman called Pamela Coleman Smith. Um, at the behest of uh, Coleman Smith and also um, Robert Waite and they were members of a secret occultist uh, Victorian society um, sort of late 19th century early 20th century called uh, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn and they were the first really to kind of bring tarot into a different space so prior to this time tarot was thought more of as a game so as any card game and they were the first to really revolutionize tarot and make it into to more of a occultist uh, divination tool. So when we're looking at the Rider Waite Smith deck what we will see is the major arcana, the minor arcana and we will really see those first archetypes especially of course in the major arcana and we will see these illustrations that we will then come to know through other decks as well. And what's so important really is when we're looking at um, the Rider Waite Smith deck visually, a lot of these inspiration, these illustrations rather, go on to become inspirations for further decks. So once you can read the Rider Waite Smith deck and understand, okay, um, you know, for example, with the Queen of Swords, we can see that she's got one hand up, holding the sword in the other hand. We can see the cherubs on her throne, her crown, the blue in the background, the clouds. When you're then coming to look at other decks depicting the Queen of Swords, a lot of them will draw from this um, as an anchor point, and then you'll begin to see, ah, okay, so even though this deck is completely different, I can still see those little pointers, those little marks of illustration that call me back, that make me realize this is the Queen of Swords without even having to look at a description at the bottom because some some decks don't um, actually write which is which um, like I have the kawaii tarot deck and that just depicts it visually so you don't have these um, little clues to the bottom so I would say that is the best deck that you really want to get started with and it's so widely available you can find it almost anywhere now um, but you definitely want to get started with the Rider Waite Smith deck as tip number one for a beginner tarot teller tarot reader. Okay, so tip number two is that you want to learn the official meanings of all the cards. And again, this is really easy to do. There are so many resources, both books, online. You can even use A.E. Waite's um, original uh, Key to the Tarot, the uh, pictorial Key to the Tarot books, which were published a couple of years after the Rider Waite Smith deck, which then give you a bit more of an understanding of what these cards were originally meant to mean. And then, of course, you can look at more modern day resources um, that kind of bridge the gap between these two and say which uh, card aligns with which meaning. Um, so, say we have a card like the Emperor instantly, that's very masculine energy. It's about structure, organization, being in our power. These are the standardized meanings for a card and then what you want to do is you want to learn them all like you're at school like you're studying for an exam and then you want to throw it all away so it's like learning a dance you want to learn that choreography but then when you're actually doing the dance you don't want to look like you're counting all the steps um, so you want to have it kind of in your muscle memory in your skin so that when you're looking at the cards you're not just thinking about okay I know that this card means this you're digging deeper than that you're finding where the meaning sits within you as well because the really important thing about tarot is that it's a divination tool so it's helping you to read either for yourself or for other people and in order to do that you need to connect with the cards authentically so you obviously have to have an awareness of what the cards actually mean um, but then you also want to know how it feels for you because that is the only way that you are going to be able to read and interpret the cards properly 
So that's kind of a, a bit of a balancing act that you need to do with tarot. And it sounds maybe a little bit complicated or even confusing, but once you get into that, into that vibe of um, seeing a card, right, knowing the core meaning, but then knowing how to interpret it because you're using your own intuition to then blend together the story that the cards are telling you. And this will be uh, something we'll work on in a later video where we talk about how we're going to um, tell the story of the card, so how one card then relates to another during a reading. But for tip number two, what we want to do is we want to learn the official meaning of the cards and that we want to throw that away in order that we can connect authentically with the cards on our own level as well. Okay, and then for tip number three, it's to find a deck that you really connect with. And it doesn't mean that it has to be just one. Um, there are so many decks out there. These are three of the faves that I've been using over the summer. So we've got the Bad Bitches Tarot, the Tinseltown Tarot, and my little travel set, which is uh, the Golden Girls Tarot. Um, but although starting off with the Rider Waite deck, it's really important to really learn what all the card meanings are and to learn how to read um, the symbolism of the tarot. Once you're kind of feeling a bit more confident and you want to um, start to read tarot a bit more deeply for yourself or for other people, it is lovely to start picking up other decks and to start seeing how the Rider Waite Smith deck runs through all these other decks with different images as well. And then you start to kind of get your own relationship with decks and with tarot decks. So for example with the whoops uh, with the Wheel of Fortune card on the Bad Bitches deck although this is obviously a very modernized deck in comparison to the Rider Waite Smith one we can see that the figure is holding the traditional seal Wheel of Fortune that we would have seen in the Rider Waite Smith deck so when we're looking at this card we know the number the name which is on these cards um, but we're able to see it as that bridging gap between older decks and a more modern one. But these decks are lovely and fun. They depict kind of modern celebrities and can be great for maybe relationship questions or more modern day questions as well. And then again, that was a bit tricky to open. So with the Tinseltown Tarot, I love this one because I love old Hollywood. And again, you've got these lovely ideas where you can see the dog, the moon in the background, which calls back to the Rider Waite Smith deck. So we're knowing how to connect with that sense of the dilemma, the sense of the dark night of the moon, the path between the two people. But obviously the illustration is totally different, but it's something that I connect to very strongly because it's an era that I love. And I really love using these cards for work questions as well as um, for more personal questions as well. So that would be my top number three tip is to find a deck that you really connect with because not only will that make reading tarot more enjoyable but it will also give you confidence as well because when you've got a deck that you connect with strongly you feel much more confident when you're reading both for yourself and for other people as well. So there we have it, the top three tips for uh, beginner tarot readers, tarot tellers. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I will see you in another tarot video soon. Bye.